This is Connie and I'm talking to you from the Case Trading Post, the museum shop at the Wheelwright Museum. And today I thought I would talk a little bit about Native American folk art. Now folk art is something that appeals to certain people. Some people find it to be a little bit too cute. Other people find that to be an admirable aspect of the art. Um, this particular day, I think I will talk about a little bit, mostly Navajo folk art, but there are a few other Pueblos represented. I'll start at this end. This is Delbert Buck's work. Delbert Buck is a young artist who started making folk art when he was 11. He was influenced by cartoons, um, and so he started making things that were kind of cartoonish, and his work has been refined over the years. So this is in piece happens to be a golf cart with horns on it because it's a cowboy golf cart and it has a dog and a man in it. He often incorporates animals in with his art. They're carved out of wood. This piece is by Jonathan Loretto and Jonathan lives mostly in Cochiti. His father was from Jemez Pueblo. His mother, Snowflake Flower, was a very well respected storyteller maker. This is one of his figurative pieces and it is a bobblehead. And he said it took him several tries till he could figure out the mechanism behind making a bobblehead. This piece is also from Cochiti. This is a clay person. Now, years and years ago, the museum here had an exhibit called Clay People, and it illustrated the different um, types of clay art, figurative art, artists have made over the years, primarily from Cochiti. Years and years ago, back in the 1800s, the um, Cochiti artists would make figures and they would try to make them on people that they were familiar with seeing, um, the priests, the school teachers, and the circus performers. So many of their pieces reflected that. When they had the exhibit here, one of the artists, Martha Acaro, came up. She made storytellers and she saw these wonderful figures, some of whom had been made by her mother, Damasia Cordero. So she thought, I'm gonna give it a try. So the first two she made, she brought up here. One was sold to a private collector and one was bought by the museum. So very highly regarded. She's been making these for years, but over the past few years has stopped because she said they're very, very difficult to do, especially things with extended arms. Um, she has one piece, it's a Pueblo dancer with a big tablita headdress. So she said it was just getting a little bit too difficult. One of the older artists is Silas Claw and his wife Bertha. Now Silas worked for the railroad and when his spare time, he would come home and he started doing clay work. And because he had less um, materials to work from, he used different types of finishes and things like that in his art, which were not traditional Navajo clay work. This is of course Navajo clay, but you see he's got a coyote on one side and sheep on the other. So this is the coyote stalking the sheep. This is an example of a pinyon pitched piece. This is by Elizabeth Many Goats, who's one of the 13 children of Betty Many Goats. Very traditional putters. Betty used made horn toad pieces with these wonderful horn toads on. Elizabeth branched out a little bit from that, putting animals and people on her figures. And this one here's the man with his, his lasso. There's a sheep and a dog and the lady sitting under the tree reading. And almost all of her dogs were black and white. And we asked her once about that and she said, that's my dog. So her dog got to appear on the piece. This is by Johnson Antonio. This is a wooden carving. He again worked for the railroad and when he was not working at the railroad, he could make these wonderful wooden carvings. Almost always they reflected some aspect of Navajo culture. This man's carrying wood and you can see he has the traditional hairdress and his wonderful hat on him. Um, he passed away several years ago, so we don't see his work as much as we used to. This little tiny figure in the front is another piece by Elizabeth. Show, again, showing some of the things that people do. This lady's playing the drum. This piece is by Jonathan Chi. Jonathan was married to one of Elizabeth's sisters. And prior to that, he did things like rodeo riding. He was a school bus driver. So when he started to do clay work, he did things that reflected the life he knew. This tiny little piece is by Sheila Antonio and it's all beaded and she makes her own armatures and she used to use things like, you know, jewelry wire, 
um, bigger pieces. She might use coat hangers to make her armatures. And the story is that she went away to school and during the training in school, they were taught to do beadwork so that they could do little barrettes and little bracelets and little belts. And she said, not this lady. So she started making her own pieces. She did anything from little individual figures to a group scene. She did a wonderful one of Thanksgiving dinner with the turkey on the table and the children on the floor waiting for their share and the women all rushing around. She's done a whole Hogan scene where you lifted the lid of the Hogan and you, or the roof and you could look in and see everything that was going on. She's a very, very accomplished artist. Unfortunately, she doesn't do a lot of work. She has some health problems, so her work is limited. So these are some of the pieces of folk art that we have here. If you'd like more information, please do send us an email or give us a call on the phone. We are here limited art hours, but we will return your calls or emails as soon as we can. Thank you very much. Keep safe and have a good day.